Good morning to all those tuning in. This is the Rebel Lemon, and today we're playing Kato. It's about a girl who is trying to reconnect with her roommate over a uh, shared passion, which is cats. So, we'll put in our name as Lemon. Lemon. So, I, by chance, found this game. Paris is truly a sight to behold. And, it's true. I can't get used to it, even having lived here for most of my life. The serene parting the city in two, the smell of the baked goods in the morning, and the buildings filled with history. Even so, living here alone could maybe be a bit mundane, but I don't have to. I share an apartment with my old friend, Roselle, who studies veterinary medicine of some sort. I don't get to spend much time with her, as my job's working the evening shift at a small newspaper. Speaking of which, I ought to let her know that I'll be heading to the office for the night in a bit. Yeah, I found this game by chance, and I'm actually super excited. The knock... I knock on her door, waiting a few seconds before entering. Ah, Lemon, this is us. Hey, Ro, how are you doing? I'm alright, Lemon. And you? All good, just wanted to let you know I'll be leaving for work in a few. Um, we could ask her about school, or ask her about today. I think I'll ask her about today, I think she might need that more. So, what have you been up to? Not much. School? Yeah. Worked from home. Uh, we can ask her if she wants to go somewhere this weekend, or if I can help cleaning up her room. Um, let's ask the second. How about we clean up here tomorrow? It's been a while since we did something together. It's okay, I'll do it later. But thank you for the offer. Um, something else then? She glances at the clock above the door behind me. Shouldn't you be going soon? Oof. Oof. You'd wind up late in not too long, right? I'm good on time usually, but... It might be time to break it off. Um, you might be right. I'm off then. I'll pass by the bakers too. If the, is there anything you'd like? No, I'm good. Alright then, see you. Ooh, she seems really down. I kind of feel bad. Hey, little S Mario up there. That's a neat thing I just caught. I leave her to her own and head for the door. Before leaving, I pat my pockets, realizing that I'm forgetting something. Ro, have you seen my keys? The ones with the cork? Uh, have you looked in the kitchen? I checked and fa found them on the countertop. I always forget to check here. Good thing she k still keeps tabs on me, even if things are different now. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, we're gonna meet cats. Uh, to my knowledge, there's three of them, and each of them are quite different. Man, how lucky am I to have a view like this going to work? I think to myself, as my feet patter against the rounded stones of the old town path, in the shade by the wall, I spot a cat, looking every bit as scruffy as the water looks serene. Oh, Roselle. Oh, Roselle. 
love this if she were here. She always used to chase after cats, patiently gain their trust and befriend them like some kind of cat whisperer. Whenever successful, which was almost always, she'd memorize the occasion by having a picture taken, like a big game hunter of old posing with her quarry. I kind of miss that side of her. Maybe a picture of my own would remind her of the good old days. The thought stops me in my tracks and I study the cat in question. It's just sitting there, gazing over the water as if saying, help, yelp, I rule this place. Which in fairness, it probably did by the looks of things. Looking at the time, I notice I have plenty of it. I could at least try to get a picture. What could possibly go wrong after all? But how should I approach? I can sneak up on the cat, or let it know you're there and close in carefully, which I will do. Ooh. Better take it slow here. Slow and steady wins the race, after all. I'm not the sorceress cat whisperer, Roselle. I would hate to spook it now, from what it was clearly, even to me, a favorite spot of theirs. Not that this cat looks particularly skittish, it has a very, well, proud bearing. Hello there, kitty. I speak softly while closing the distance. When I'm merely a few meters away, it gives me a casual glance out of the corner of its eye. I get the idea and stop. Satisfied with my response, it resumes watching over the still lake. Oh, it has a little smile. That's cute. I could easily just take a picture of the cat's back and call it a day. But my professional pride berates me for even considering such a notion. How could I? I have standards. <laughs> uh, it may be not be the cuddliest cat in the world, but I will get a good photo one way or another. Um, I could wait for the right moment, toss a rock, or close the distance. I have a feeling that if I toss a rock, it will spook it. Um, closing the distance might irritate it. I'm going to wait for the right moment. The cat seems to rather enjoy the view of the water. Ever so slowly, I walk to the edge, maintaining respectful distance to the cat and sitting down with my legs crossed. The late summer's evening, sun shrouding the city in a pink glow, not even the faintest breeze disrupting the mirror like surface of the water. I glance at the cat, it's ba basking in the sun, with closed eyes savoring their warmth. The moment is here. With careful, deliberate movements, I fish my phone out of my pocket and lean in for a picture. The picture perfectly captures the seren serenity of the scene. Serenity. There you go. Not wishing to disturb the cat any longer, I get up and walk away. Oh, that's a gorgeous picture. Oh, and I sent it to her. The reply comes though so fast it feels like I got it before I even sent the message. That's a gorgeous photo. The cat looks like a stray. How did you manage to get so close? Tell me. I just took my time with it. I took a page from your book. I gotta learn f from the best. Haha, <laughs> the best? I wouldn't go that far, but thanks. Did it take long to get it to that point? Not really, it didn't seem to mind me being in the vicinity as long as it could keep track of me, and I did nothing, nothing too hasty. Drays are often kind of chill if you don't bother them. Be careful though, they can be unpredictable. Yeah, I got that f vibe. Yeah, I will be. 
Uh, almost forgot. Thanks for the picture. Um, I think I'll make that my new home screen f on my phone. Good chat, Ro, but I need to hurry up now. Lost more time than I thought here. <laughs> Go to work. Oh, I only get the option. I can't skip. Yeah, I honestly did think this would be a um, good game to play. Seeing as I don't really play mainstream games, I just do what I like. I think that's much better for the viewer. If I'm not enjoying my time, you're not going to enjoy watching me. So, there you go. Work went by as usual, and it was over in no time. Dawn is looking around the corner as I'm heading for the bakery. All of the little shops are closed, but the bakers are already at their battle stations, churning out their goods for the breakfast rush and the coming day. Thanks to having friends in high places, also known as the owner, I'm allowed to sneak in through the back door and get my grubby hands on the bread early. Roselle said she didn't want any, but I'll get her some just in case she changes her mind. Besides, you can never have too much bread. True. Also, fresh baked bread? God, is it so good. As I leave the bakery with my precious baked goodness, I notice a cardboard box next to the door, which apparently is the residence of a charmingly fat cat sleeping inside. Clearly, it's been being cared for to some extent, as the floor is draped with a cozy looking blanket, and somebody's made it a little roof to keep the rain out. That, I'm assuming it's this little box here. Is it a new tenant on the street, or am I selectively blind, and it's always been here? Looks like a happy cat, though. I can't recall. Looking around, the nearby area is strangely littered with glass jars, too. Inspired by the success of the earlier cat encounter, I decide to add a win further glory by attaining a second triumphant moment. One to make Roselle, the cat whisperer, proud. I drop my bag and crouch down next to the sleepy cat. Or what I thought was a sleeping cat. It opens its eyes and looks down at me lazily. I could pet her head or wait. I think I'll pet it. Those chubby little cheeks appear to be destined for cuddling. Testing the waters, I tentatively reach out with my hand but meet no resistance. I caress its head and it peacefully closes its eyes. It looks like a smile, appearing content. A soft purr and an outstretched paw closes and opens gently. Pet paw or scratch chin. Ooh, this one's a tough one because cats can be pretty fickle. I've had, I've pet cats that are, uh, have liked one, both, or like neither. I'm gonna scratch the chin though. Ah, there we go. I unwittingly touched the cat's chin and pressed it its head against my hand. I removed my hand and looked at it quizzitively. Cat looks back at me with steady eyes with that oddly satisfied face of a person who knows they'll get what they want. <laughs> Difference being, this is a cat. And one that knows what it wants. Hesitantly, I reach back under its chin, and yet again, it pushes against my hand. Finally, catching on to this advanced form of communication, I gave it a good scratch and see the grin-like face of an excessively happy cat. It kind of... If it was purple, I would say this is the Cheshire Cat. And that is my favorite cat, hands down. The rumbling purr could probably be heard all over town. All the while, the cat bobs along my movements. After a while, I grow tired of the whole affair and stop. 
There's cuddling, then there's spending a whole day standing in the back alley. The cat jumps up to stroke its body against my knees, persistently asking for more cuddles. I can feel the tiredness lurking, the mental image of my bed calling me home, but instead I would appear to have been confiscated by this cat. Every time I make an effort to get going, it gets in the way of my feet, causing me to nearly trip over in order to avoid stepping on the cheeky bugger. While Rose's not here, she could still have a good laugh at my expense if I can nab that picture. The conundrum remains, however. How to get enough space to do the nabbing of said picture? Try selfie camera. Stand up. We'll push. I will actually try the selfie camera. Because this seems like the least rude option. Maybe I don't need to create the distance. I fumble with my pocket as I continue petting the cat with the other hand. In the position I'm sitting, it's difficult to get it out of my pocket and I struggle for a moment. Finally, I prevail against the instrumental odds. Place the camera in front of us and snap a bunch of photos, hoping at least one wouldn't be a blurry mess of a disaster. I go through them quickly, and there is one close-up picture of the cat's face that didn't end up looking like the photo was taken from inside a tumbled dryer. It will have to make do. A few more cuddles later, and I managed to extract myself from the situation and start off in the direction of home. Oh, look at that. That one's adorable. And how'd you crack your phone? While perhaps not the best interaction on my part, this picture turned out kinda great. Wow, how did you manage to take this one? After many trials and tribulations, I managed I, to grab Nabbit in the end. That and approximately 42,372 others that turned out rubbish. But besides that, that's the point. Oh, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Did you get along well? Kind of. Not bad. Not great. I don't think, uh... I was thinking of trying to feed it. That could work. Just don't give it raw fish or something. That could make it sick. Don't worry. I'll try to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, I really like the um, visuals to this game. And the uh, concept of uh, trying to connect with your roommate more uh, with like a mutual um, thing. Um, but one of the things that really nabbed me right away is the music. And I'm very curious in like um, what the inspiration behind it was, to be honest. What a day! Keychain rattling in my hand, I unlock the door, shutting it behind me. Dumping the bag on the floor by the wall and trudging on over to the kitchen for a bite to eat before bed. I trottle past Rue's door, shut as always. Just a faint blue light leaking through the frame. She must be on the laptop again. Finally arriving at the corner. I have myself a few pieces of fresh loaf before dragging myself into the li living room and to the TV. Flopping onto the couch, I watch whatever happens to be on, lazily watching away. There's a documentary on about life on the African savanna. It'd be just her thing. After a few minutes of deliberating, I get up, going over to Rose's room, and gently knocking on the door. Hey, Ro, you up? Yeah, Lamon. What is it? Um, yeah, let's ask her to watch some telly. Can I come in? Sure. Why don't you come hang out with me. 
There's wildlife special on. There's lions and everything. Just like we used to want to catch. It's a few moments of silence. I'd rather not. I want to be alone. Knowing when not to overstay my welcome, I wish you a good night before gently closing the door and heading back to the couch. Ah, uh, go to sleep. We'll get her out. She seems really depressed. Which is a thing. Also, I will say, um, if you have depression or knowing someone with depression, do try and reach out to someone or reach out to this person. Because you'd be surprised on how much it actually helps. Um, but also, um, with anyone with depression, they will tell you um, that even though having someone reach out um, occasionally is really nice, don't be too pushy about it. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can really say about that. Um, Never having been one for sitting around, come afternoon I treat myself to a walk. Some might think that walking is a bit of a particular treat, but in the city, like Paris, it really is. Uh, there's always something beautiful to see, something exciting to discover. I've always... I've been walking around the city virtually every day for years. And it still never bores me. On the contrary, it helps me delodge writer's block and distract me from other worlds. One of the streets and spots I always come back to, though, is this little old street passing by the small park. The trees happen to make for a great spot to just get away from the sun on a hot day. An added bonus. Suddenly, I spot an orange fuzz in the periphery, and I instinctively know it's a cat. It's funny, the things that you notice once you're actively looking for them. Well, it's either that, or I've been afflicted with cat-engineered nanomachines altering my perception, which, in all honesty, is a touch unlikely. Oh, it's so adorable. I like the fat cat more. Second favorite cat, though. Rather than a fully grown cat, there's one mere kitten playing with the leaves beneath a tree. Playtime is disturbed, however, when a pedestrian tramples by, startling the little creature. After having taken cover by the tree for a while, it tentatively returns to the game, soon blissfully distracted. I'd love to join in, but I wouldn't want to fight in it either. I could sneak clo closer, not join it. Ah, I have this. This will be the opposite of the first cat. The first cat um, will respect you more if you give. Make sure it has. Um, your attention and knows where you are. This one, I'm assuming, is going to be the opposite. And it is. It's unaware of my presence. Then surely it can't be scared, right? Whenever the kitten's distracted by its play, I approach with a soft, quiet steps, gradually making my approach. At a short distance away, the kitten stops, looking at me directly, which would indicate that it's now aware of me. I avoid looking at it directly, Acting as if it were not there at all. The kitten doesn't resume playing, but appears to be, but it doesn't appear to be terrified or particularly bothered, bothered by me either. I try to build its trust. Um, play with a stick, or tell her about your day. I'm gonna tell her about my day, cause I feel like a lot of animals. If you just talk to them, it actually helps. Ah, there you go. Maybe I can get across my friendly 
darkness through a casual conversation. I go on to tell the kitten about my day, the cat by the canal and my night shift at work, and about the ca other cat by the calf. I believe it's pronounced cafe, but I don't know. While facing in the general direction of the cat, I don't look directly at it, trying to communicate that I'm not a threat to it. I cast a quick glance at it, and the kitten is watching me carefully, but seems less withdrawn and more curious. Um, I don't think it will want me to try and pet it, so let's play with it with a stick. Well, it's obviously a rather playful sort, maybe that'd help me befriend it. The tree behind us is kindly enough dropped a twig on the ground. Looks like it could double as a cat's toy. Picking it up, I give it a try, drawing a figure eight in the air. But I've never played with a cat. Surely it can't be too complicated. But how I show should go about it is still a question that needs answering. Um, I want... So, in more skittish cats, you want to avoid sudden movements. Um, you only really want to do sudden movements if you and the cat really know each other. Otherwise, you could just startle cats. <laughs> With the kitten being easily scared, I feel like it'd be detrimental to be too aggressive. Instead, I start with the stick, uh, some ways off, starting slowly and carefully, adding speed while changing directions. The kitten's eyes are soon set on the tip of the twig, and it follows it caref curiously. With the kitten's attention, I dare go closer. And as the stick passes by, it sweats after the stick with its paw. Another gentle swoosh of the stick, and the kitten jumps in, chasing the toy to its full extent. It pounces on it and holds it down with its claws. I let it have this victory before carefully jug jiggling it out of its grip. The kitten's eyes are brimming with light. It is something Roselle must see. I fumble with my free hand as I continue to distract the kitten with the twig. I manage to hold, get a hold of my phone and turn on the camera and get the picture taken. Instead of taking my leave right away, we play some more, but a group of young loudsters startle it again and it scurries off. I'd love to meet it again. Oh, that's adorable. I like animals in games, especially when they give you the option to pet it. With that a small sense of pride, I will relay the brilliant image to Ro. Clearly, I'm not the only one to recognize its quality. That has to be the cutest thing I've seen in ages. I know, I've never spent as much time with cats or other critters as you have, but it's easy to see the appeal now. They're lovely, aren't they? Such an adorable little kitten with the bell and everything. Actually, yeah, that, it had a collar. That means it's someone's cat, isn't it? I wish I had a cat like that. It reminds me of the first one. Uh... When I was a kid. If the cat was anything like this one, it's easy to understand your obsession. <laughs> I'll be home soon. I can see her begin to type, then stop, erase, and type again. This goes on for a little while, until the word OK shows up. Oh. So it looks like they're coming out of their shell a little bit, but they're hesitant. A bit underwhelming, maybe, but at least I roused her for a little while. Um, for those who don't know, rousing just means, like, raising spirits a little. Or to get excited. Um, when I get home, I enter Rose's room. I don't mean to be demeaning when I say that, I just 
It's not a common word. Uh, when I get home, I enter Rose's room. Um, I just wanted to let you know I'll be visiting the bakery lunchtime tomorrow. I need to grab a cake for Rico uh, from work's birthday. If you want to come along, I'm sure the cat will be there. I think I'd rather stay here. They say it's going to be very hot out tomorrow. But if you do see it, you know the rule, right? Right. When you see a cat for a second time, you must name it. I remember. I'll head out again and go to work soon. Good luck. When down by the canal, I keep an eye out for the scruffy cats. But I don't run into it again. I'm getting that uh, see all goal really good. I've actually been practicing a little. My only choice is to go to work. Work turns out like usual, pretty uneventful. Yes, I'm I'm actually really enjoying the game so far. Um, I think I'll do one more day, like rotation, and then I'll leave it there. I just wanted something a little bit before, uh, for the day. Just something easy and relaxing. Because I think these types of games are actually really awesome. Especially when, um, you play these really high stressful games. Like, uh, some of the ones I have been playing. Um, so I actually really like to wind down with, uh, these more casual games, to be honest. After some well-deserved sleep, I head out and grab that cake. To be honest, I'm more excited at the chance of seeing the, the cat again than to celebrate my co-worker. I should get the cat something. It looked like uh, one that would appreciate something edible. I take a quick de detour to the grocery store and I quickly find myself in the small pet aisle. I have no idea what the cat likes, and the picture of the jaws littered around it, its bed pop into my mind. Um, maybe they had contained it something it liked, but I can't quite remember what label it had. What should I buy? Hmm. Shrimp. Uh, well... You could buy normal cat treats, um, but I don't think it would be in Jaws, and I, and this is just me, but I don't really remember, um, shrimp being jarred. I think olives are actually stuff that is jarred, though I don't think you should be feeding cats olives, but we'll do it. It had a kind of, like... Olive jar, no? It hadn't been an olive jar, but it feels like it was a very weird thing to give to a cat. On the other hand, Ro likes them, and she is approximately half cat, so maybe. I find a jar of sliced green olives. They feel like a s suitable size. As a backup, I buy a small package of cat treats as well. Wouldn't hurt my chances. Oh, the cat's back! When I reach the bakery, I find the cat is resting in its makeshift bed. Good afternoon, Kitty. The cat raises its head and lets out a heavy, drawn-out yawn, exposing a line of long teeth. It blinks slowly at me as I reach out with my hand to pet its head. Roselle sends her regards. She sent me here with the intention of buying... Oh, of gifting you a name. Oh, I get to name the cat? Um... I'm gonna name it Tiger because it has the stripes. I think that's how you name Tiger. I'll name, I'll name Tiger. Or 
Yeah, no, I'm a moon tiger. How do you feel about tiger? I think it suits you. Tiger meows. <laughs> I'll take that as a vote in favor of my suggestion. But back to the issue at hand. Will Tiger enjoy the olives? After a brief struggle to get the lid of the jar off, the characteristic pop drawing Tigger's... Sorry, Tiger's attention. Oh, I should have went with Tigger. Tiger's attention. Ah, oh, I love the pop of jars. It's my favorite thing when I open a jar of pickles. I'm not a fan of olives, though. Getting one out of the jar, I offer it to the cats. Tiger strokes its cheek against my hands. It flops onto its back, tapping, trapping the olive with its paw. Bring the olive closer, it taps it again. Like a food critic inspecting a meal's quality. Then with a smooth, slow motion, it takes the olive and eats the whole thing. I never would have believed Cats could like these things, but Tiger just ate one. The cat sniffs around, scanning the air for more olives to devour. When realizing that there's certainly more in this jar of mine, it pulls out every trick in the Hustler's Cat's book. But I have a better idea. If it enjoys these things so much, why don't we make Tiger work for them? Now, what should I attempt to teach Tiger? High five, sits pretty, or talk? Um, isn't high five just like a handshake? Let's go sit pretty. I would love to see Tigger sit pretty. It should be possible since the, the cat literally likes its treats. I pick one up, reaching out to Tigger, so it knows that there is, that there is there before I hold up above the cat. It looks at my hand, and I see the urge to jump after it, surging through my cat's body. Oh, I should have did the handshake. It twitches in the tweet's direction, and one paw is slightly lifted. I tease by moving the cat treat in circles and call out to the cat. It's enough to make Tigger? I'm just gonna say Tigger from now on. Oh man. I messed up. I stand up on its hind legs and hug my hand with its front paws. The cat tries to smell out an opening to the treat, and I grant the cat a well earned one. I pick up another to dangle it above the cat. It gazes breaks for my morsel to look at me, and the cat gives me its best, are you kidding me, this again, look. It would appear Tigger doesn't much appreciate me making it partake in these strenuous activities. I pet the cat's head to make up for the preposterous proposal, which does seem to work. At risk of overfeeding the cat, it's probably wise to reward its efforts in another way rather than giving it more food. Belly rubs, scratch its cheeks, or a massage. I think it would like the cheek scratches because it liked the chin. Yeah, there you go. I don't think it liked the sitting thing though. Those puffy cheeks look fit for a good scratching. Using the tip of my finger, I gently scratch its cheek before moving to scratching it just behind the jaw. Tigger clearly approves. A humming purr radiates from a very pleased cat. It angles its head to give me a better access, and the scratching continues for a few minutes before turning its head to the other side. And the process is repeated. Tigger's purring slowly grows more quiet until it drifts off into a nap, its head resting against my hand. Ever so carefully, I lower its head into the bundle of blanket, bedding, succeeding in doing so without waking Tiger up. 
I realized that I've already spent much more time with Tiger than I had intended, and I need to pick up that cake already. Hesitantly, I give Tiger one last pet on the head before saying my goodbyes and escaping the bakery. Oh, but no picture. I wonder if I could have got one. It's bustling with more activity than usual. When the old owner scurries by, I received the great news. Business has been going well, and they were moving to a new, bigger place not too far away. Hey, good for them. I congratulate her. Apologize for not having much time to chat before taking my leave, cake in hand. There you go. And it should be soon to the end. So to hang on with me just a little while longer. I'm home. Unlike the usual silent, Rose calls for me. Hey, good. Now I'm on. Can you come over here for a minute? When she... When had she last been the one to call out to me? That's something I haven't considered being a possibility for a very long time. I walk over to her room. Yes. Roselle plays with her hands as if she's unsure of how to bring up the subject. Uh, thank you for the photos. They were nice. However... Yes. That kitten. Was there anyone with it? Uh, no. It was alone, I think. Isn't that strange? For a kitten to be all alone, I mean. I guess, but it had a collar on, so it might just live nearby. She doesn't look convinced. You know what? I'll see if I can spot it on my way to make sure. That would be great. Wait, is that Roselle? Was that me? I'm not sure. I'll be off then. Do you want to come and see it? I can see how much she considers it. How her brow froze and her eyes trace the crevices of the floorboards. It might get scared with yet another stranger around. Best you go alone. Scared of frightening it? That's not an excuse I've heard from Roselle, the great cat whisperer. Maybe this is a case is a little bit more delicate, but it's not like the kitten trusts me either. However, if she doesn't want to, I can't force her. I'll just do my best then. Wish me luck. Good luck. Empowered by her blessing, I head out. Just before leaving, I put the cake in the fridge and make my way to the old pedestrian street again. Are we going to be adopting a kitty? I'm surprised to see the kitten sitting right next to the tree. Like it had the other day. It feels a little strange to find such a young cat out here all alone again. I would like to have a closer look at the collar, as it might have a number or an address on it. Hmm. The kitten is sitting next to the tree, trunk looking at the passerbys. It looks healthy, so someone must be feeding it at least. I really hope I'm just overthinking it. From my last meeting, I know I should be careful when I approach it. No sudden movements or sounds that will scare it. Having made my approach, I speak softly to get its attention. Hey, little friend. We need a proper name for you too, don't we? Ooh. I'm gonna name her... Tan... Uh... Tangerine. I think that's how you spell it. If not, it's... Tangine. I don't know. Tangerine. What do you think of that? The kitten glances over me with big eyes, which I decide to be an approval. This reminds me that I still have cat treats in my pocket. Maybe Tangerine will like them? Maybe. 
But I'm not the only one with eyes for the kitten. A kid separates from his mother's hand to chase the kitty. Tangerine runs away, but in my direction. I can't let it get away. Follow the kitten or stop it. Um, I think it might be better off to follow it. Because I don't want to frighten it by tr trying to stop it. It's probably for the best uh, to let it run. The kid's caught by his mother, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. I follow the kitten around the corner and find it hiding in a doorway. Its body is pressed into the corner and its eyes watch me carefully. The ordeal has gone to me... Wait. The ordeal has gone me pretty close. Maybe I have a chance here. Um, this one's tough because it's already frightened and I don't want to close in on it. But on the other hand, do I really want to throw something at it? I'm going to risk throwing the treat. Hey, that worked. Well, there's no twigs uh, to use for play. And even if there were, I'm not sure that'd be a good idea. Maybe a bit bite to eat would help. The little creature feel at ease. The situation isn't exactly what I'm used to, but I believe in the versatile powers of food. Food is always the best way to get to someone. Or to an animal, I suppose. That's how we got dogs domesticated. I crouch down and toss a treat carefully so it lands next to the kitten. It snaps its eyes on the new objects and sniffs the air. When it's convinced it won't move again, it sneaks up on the treat and eats it. When finished, it sniffs around on the ground for me. Oh, for more. I throw another one, and the projectile makes Tangerine shy away before quickly returning to eat the food. I throw the treats closer to me so Tangerine can get within reach. However, Tangerine becomes aware of that and grows more careful, approaching the treats, backing away when it grabs it. Um, that's fair. That's typically how it works. It's a slow process, but I get the kin close enough. Um, try to feed it out of hand. Never grab it. It's already very shaken. I slowly pick out a few treats and place them on my palm. I extend my hand in front of me, making sure the kitten can see them. Tangerine looks at them, but hesitates, so I throw one of them halfway between us. The kitten crouches down and sneaks up to the treat, carefully watching me. After snacking on the nearest treat, it looks curiously at my hand, stretching its head out. It takes a reluctant step forward. Uh, towards me, and I have to stay completely still. Movementless like a statue, a gargoyle on the Notre Dame. Or maybe not a gargoyle, they come to life, right? As Tangerine gets closer, it grows braver and walks up the last steps to smell my hand. I feel its whiskers tickle my fingertips, but I stay still as a mountain. Tangerine takes the first treat and clearly, I can clearly hear it sn snap it as it bites into it. One after another, the treats disappear and my hand empties. I know Tangerine won't like it, but I still have to grab it to check its collar. My hand eases closer and picks up the kitten. I quickly press it against my chest to stabilize it. Tangerine tenches up as soon as I touch it, but feels slightly calmer after a few seconds in my bosom. There you are, such a good kitty. I try to soothe the kitten and gently stroke it with my thumb. When it's calm, I place it on my lap to check the collar. Tangerine meows, and I find a phone number that I write down on my phone. When that is done, I loosen my grip and stroke the kitten gently to make it forget my manhandling. 
then I have to let go and Tangerine screws away. But I don't think that we are back at on square one. I'll leave some treats on the ground in case it comes back and and leave. There we go. We got to play with the kitten once again. As soon as I get back home, I walk into Rose's room. I got a number. Tangerine had one on its collar. Oh, and I followed your rule. I named it. I also forgot to mention that I named the bakery cat as well. It's Tiger. What are we waiting for? Call it. I typed in the number and let the signals go by. They go on for longer and longer. No answer? Doesn't appear so. I'll have to try again later. Well, keep me updated. I will. And we're back to work. I try to call a few more times. Eventually, I give up and head out for work. And... I th actually thought that was really good. I actually like playing with the small cat. There are new slow... There are slow news days, and then there are dead news days. Ah, <sighs> I need to get something published today or my boss will get on my case. Might as well have a stroll and see if I can at least find something worthy to write about. A city, beautifully lit in the dark as I find my way down to the town path. Is probably one of the prettiest sights. Oh, spots around town, not sights. Another advantage it has going for it is the fact that for some arcane reason, nobody ever goes there, rendering it a quiet place for thoughts to be had. Hang on a moment. What's that sound? My pondering is interrupted by an aggressively growling and tremendously noise near the bridge. My curiosity is getting the better of me, and I silently walk over to check the source of the racket. Hey, it's our friendly neighborhood stray. In the glow of the lamp lights, there's a group of cats staring at each other, hissing and swatting at their paws. Four of them seem to be working together against a somewhat larger, rougher looking one. Could it be the same one from the other day? It looks like it, and appears to be in trouble. Um, I'm actually wanting to step in and help. Um, let's try to interrupt the fight. Ugh, that didn't go well. I can't let the fight... Can I go back? Ooh, I can. I'll try and make a better choice. I'm actually wondering what would be a better choice. Pour water over them? Hey, there we go. Four against one is hardly sporting, so why not even the odds a little bit? I have a bottle of water in my bag, and I'm not afraid of using it. I run, run at the scuffle. Hey! They don't pay me much heed, though. I unscrew the cork of my doomsday device and unleash a raging torrent at the cats. Well, at least as much of a raging torrent a bottle of water would allow. While my aim is not perfect, I do manage to hit the four upstarts, but the older cat ends up being collateral damage in the process. Oh. I wonder if I was supposed to let them do their own thing, but it's fine. The youngsters dart into the night, hissing with displeasure, and the remaining cat stays with me. It stands alert and stares at me with those piercing eyes. I can't say it looked particularly happy at the present. Breaking eye contact with a nod, it starts to clean off the water with its tongue. Huh. Maybe the cat is less, at least a little bit appreciative for the help. It's hard to tell, and that leaves me feeling a, uh, like both the conquering hero and the ill-willed villain. 
You can be both, to be fair. In the end, I think it does know that I was trying to help. I stayed for a good while, making sure that the pack of rascals don't return. Could we give it some treats? Or did we use them all up? In the meantime, I should come up with a name for it. Oh, I'm naming it Ruffles. Ruffles. I don't know how to spell Ruffles. I believe that's how you spell Ruffles. More time passes before I address the cat in a relaxed tone. Okay, Ruffles. Time for me to go. Ruffles. Yeah, I like the sounds of that. I got work to do, but I'll see you around. I turn and continue on my way down along the canal. A few moments later, I notice a shadow at the corner of my eye, by my left foot. Looking down, I find that Ruffles has decided to come along. We follow the canal in silence, a feeling of mutual respect in the air. Maybe we have some things in common after all. A few more minutes go by before the cat stops, sitting by the water once again. I feel oddly compelled to find a justification for staying here. Um, let's offer some food. Oh, alright, fine. I'll go back, offer it something better. Oh, it goes all the way back to the beginning? Ah, well. What happens? I let them resolve. Oh, that's more of a neutral. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna solve it. Ah, uh, that's kind of annoying. I wish there was um a button to go back to the decision. But it's fine. I do now know though, there are positive decisions, negative decisions, and Neutral ones. Ruffles. Ruffles. So, that's actually um, a thing that I appreciate. I, uh, now I'm thinking about it. I could I should have went back with the fat cat. Uh, let's clean up garbage. A soda can distracts me from the cat. This place is beautiful, but how can people decide to just drop whatever rubbish they're carrying here of all places? Seriously. Just keep it and find a bin. Like, holy shit. It's not that hard. And it's really annoying that of like how lazy some people to be. Don't be that person. They were strong enough to carry it when it was full. Why is it so impossible to do so when it's empty? There's even a garbage bin right here. More than mildly annoyed, I stuff the can in the bag to recycle later, ending up picking up other items and putting them in the bin. Ruffles follows me around with its eyes as I do. With just a modicum of effort and a minute or two, the spot looks much better. Ruffles stands up, walks over a bit, and sits down next to to a piece of paper. Miss this, did you? Thank you for your invaluable <laughs> contribution. The cat has attitude. I make an exaggerated bow before realizing it's a cat. Somewhat embarrassed, I grab the paper with... Oh, there you go. I grab the paper with, with haste. Not really thinking much about it. But we were, for a moment, so close, we nearly touched. A thought strikes me. Clearly, I'm some sort of cat's chosen one. Like Ro. And if so, this must be a test. Or some other pretentious thing like that, right? I chuckle quietly to myself. If I try to touch Ruffles, I might for real lose my hand, as well as most of my arm and possibly my face. But why is it so tempting? Mm. Off of food, touch cat, play with the paper crumble. 
Huh. This is a difficult one. Because so far... It's always been respect the distance. So I don't think touching the cat would be a great idea. And offering food last time had a negative reaction. But it could work. I think I'll play with the paper crumble. Ah, that was a neutral. It could make for a decent improvised cat toy. Ah, uh, should I try it? Is this the... Um... Yeah. Oh, that auto plays it. Ah, I missed. Okay, I'm gonna go back. So I now know... I'm actually gonna just try and give it some food. Because... That way I'm still maintaining my distance. But also... Um, giving it something beneficial. Ruffles. Oh, why is it not texting? There we go. Ruffles. I know this is not the best thing going, like, most enter thing, entertaining thing. Just going back and, like, picking a d better option. But it is what it is. Offering food. You don't like it? This is the pickiest motherfucking cat I've ever seen. This cat should be goddamn helping. Happy. I'm getting it free food. But whatever. Ah. Uh, this actually. I will say, this game is a lot harder to actually make decisions than it does look. Because you don't necessarily get everything that a cat may or may not like. You only get hints at it and you have to figure it out. Which I do like. Uh, let's touch the cat. Still clutching the paper in one hand. I crouch down again and reach out a tentative hand. Ruffles st sits still and follows my hand movement. With that look I never can quite interpret. It's all or nothing. For glory, for honor, and to potential dismemberment. And let's not hope for the latter. I reach for the top of its head and touched its rugged fur, weathered from a long time of living the streets. I scratch the scruffy hair on its shoulders and rough ruffles tolerates me with a dis- Interested glance. Ruffles might not exactly be as friendly as appearances would, oh, unfriendly as appearances would indicate. But then again, looks can be deceiving and all that. I don't want to push it any further, and I'm satisfied with that. The cat must have, have at some point, been close to humans as well. Even I, in my other incompetence, that kind of strikes me more than the character, so, can tell that it isn't just a fair rover. While certainly not the smoothest of friendships, I get the feeling that Ruffles is at least somewhat less indifferent towards me. Oh, that's good. Ruffles and I would... Have to part ways for now, but I'm looking forward to meeting it again. Once back at work, inspiration hits me. I could always write a little piece about the issue about abandoned cats around the city. After all, I no, oh, after all, never noticed before. So bringing it to light might result in some good. That is true. But. I think I'll end it there. This has actually been a really fun experience. And I'm actually very interested in continuing it, to be honest. So, let's see. What I like so far. The visuals are pretty simple, but they're really well executed and actually really consistent 
All unsaved at- Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Do I have to save? Um... I think it's saved as it transitioned. So, I should be fine. If not, I'll just do whatever I need to to come back up here. So, the visuals are very consistent. And actually very pleasing to the eye. Um... The sounds and music is not only very solid, but it's actually very pleasant. And I like the choices. I like how it's not just black and white, how it's like there's a gradient of a good choice, a bad choice, and a neutral one, even though I'm not the best at picking them. And then I think I like a lot of the themes. Hey, there we go. We got three of them. I'm assuming this is three for the first cat, three for the second, and three for the third. Or maybe we can even get more. We'll just have to see. But that being said, I'm going to have to end it off today. And I hope everyone tuning in will actually tune in for my next uh, video on Kato. Uh, but until then... I'll have to thank you for tuning in to our frequency. Because this is the Rebel Lemon signing off. So good night and sweet nightmares.